This gentleman right here. Thank you, sir. My name is Michael Shore. I'm here in Charlotte. First, it's an honor to have you here with us today. Uh, I'm concerned that your decision to allow offshore drilling uh, could have the effect of chilling investment into alternate sources of energy. And I'm interested in what incentives you're going to be proposing to establish the conditions and to stimulate uh, research and development and expansion of that critical sector. Well, I think it's a great question. We invested in wind. We invested in solar. We invested in biomass. We invested in research and development. We invested in battery technologies. Here's the challenge that we have. We don't yet have the technological breakthroughs that can completely replace fossil fuels. So for the next 10 years, next 20 years, we're still going to be using oil. We're still going to be using coal. We're still going to be using natural gas. We're still going to be using the traditional sources to fuel our cars, to heat our homes, to run our big power plants, etc. Unless somebody here invents something tomorrow, which would be very helpful, and if you have it, let me know. Oh, uh, you saw where I was going. So I'd like to say, with all due respect to the president, that this is me letting you know. I'm here speaking because I'm at the forefront right now of the most advanced mathematics ever known to mankind. And because my teacher, Marco Rodin, discovered an unknown mathematical language inherent to nature, and I found the key of how to model it in three-dimensional space. The saying is that mathematics is the language of God, but until now, no one's been speaking God's language. What we have is the grand unified field theory. With it, you can create an exhaustible free energy, end all diseases, produce unlimited food, travel anywhere in the universe, build the ultimate supercomputer, artificial intelligence, and obsolete all existing technology. How is it possible to make such outrageous claims? Because we have the secret that connects all of the world's technologies together, numbers. We discovered that numbers are real, a living language, a jigsaw puzzle that when pieced together no longer creates a rendition or approximation of reality. Numbers are reality neither flat, nor arbitrary, nor imaginary, nor irrational. They are actually points or locations that fold out into a 3D shape defining space and time literally. Mr. Roden discovered an equation that was so eloquent in its simplicity that it involved no more than nine numbers around a circle. And with it, you can do all the functions of all the branches of math instantly. It displays a perfect spin symmetry of numbers forming mirror images just like our two hands, a feat that's baffled countless scientists and mathematicians. When you look at this symbol, you immediately see it's composed of two aspects. One is this lazy eight, or the infinity symbol, and the other is the red pyramid at the top. The infinity symbol is the equation for the physical world we live in. It's a circuit or a pathway of motion. Six numbers that form a hexagon. Thus, such diverse phenomena as light polarizing, beehive, Saturn's north pole, and snowflakes are all versions of this hexagon. These shapes form pathways for any matter in motion, which is never straight, but always at an angle. Nothing in the physical world ever moves in a straight line, not a bullet shooting, not lightning coming down out of the sky. Everything is a coil, even a photon coming from a distant star proving relativity exists. Our body is called this mortal coil. Our DNA is a coil, and it's no coincidence that it matches our equation perfectly. It makes us into a vortex machine that sucks things in at the top, and shoots them out at the bottom. As it does this, it regulates its own temperature, a really important concept for technologies that are always overheating. It's an imploding, exploding machine, a gyroscope, an antenna built to perfectly transmit and receive waveforms. In fact, Marco's antenna designs are protecting the four corners of the United States because they were found to be the most sensitive antennas ever created. Around the same time, he also presented at the largest genetic engineering conference in the world on DNA sequencing, thus proving the ability of this math to cross between the sciences. Jonas Salk, who was the inventor of the polio vaccine, stated that this work was so advanced it would never be understood in Marco's lifetime unless he cloned himself. And so maybe that's what I am. But what's the connection between all these sciences? And the answer is simple. It's doubling. 
When you follow what these numbers are doing, you get doubling. And why might that be significant? Where our cells double to create us, we have one cell, conceptions, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Musical scales are doubling, the binary code for computers doubling, nuclear reactions, squares and square roots, all doubling. Doubling is motion at an angle, or what's called angular momentum. It's the whirlwind and treadmill of creation. It spins the atoms in our body, the earth on its axis, the solar system, galaxy, the whole universe. And so what causes this doubling? What is it that's being transmitted and received? And that's where that red pyramid comes in. This pyramid is representative of what we call flux fields. We have electricity, at the center of electricity is magnetism. At the center of magnetism is a flux. It's a higher dimensional energy known by many names such as dark energy, tachyons, monopoles, gravitons. We call it etheron energy. It's the energy that's keeping us conscious and alive. And it's not a static or stationary energy. It's a pulse, it's a surge, it's the beating heart of all existence. It's the ultimate fundamental particle in the universe, the God particle, and I know how to harness it. This energy is the source of all time, motion, and vibration. It's the only thing that comes from the whole, or the zero, the center of the cyclone. It emanates linearly in all directions, penetrating everything without any resistance. It cannot be shielded. As it penetrates, it leaves a grain. It shows you how things move, how they stick together or come apart. It animates everything. It's the source of the non-decaying spin, the electron. If you combine it with a coil, you get a perfect mathematical vortex consisting of a positive electromagnetic energy radiating out and a negative backdraft counter space which is the same as gravity it allows for contraction. Etherons are literally the glue that holds the universe together. Einstein called it an inertia ether. Ultimately when this is arrayed in true 3D shape which is what I discovered it forms a shape commonly known as a torus or a donut. This is nearly 20 years later. What I found was this. Essentially, this thing is a heat sink. It's a temperature regulator, just like your human body. It's a universal geometry designed for maximum efficiency and energy transformation and an ecological method by which the universe reprocesses matter, using it as a coolant source to bathe itself at the core of a black hole and then dissipate, dissipate heat away out of a white hole. It's based on compression, decompression, just like we use to control temperatures in technologies like refrigerators. The Big Bang was just one of these reactions giving birth to this expanding universe, which is expanding because we're on the southern half. The northern half is contracting. Okay? Space expands, time contracts, black hole to white hole. The torus is what everything becomes at its maximum acceleration. This experiment you're going to watch while I finish my talk, I want you to keep in mind when you're watching this magnet spinning around, there's no energy going into this coil. It's totally turned off. And I'll continue. Your blood cells are a torus. DNA is a torus. Magnetic fields, galaxies, all Tauruses. That's why a tornado is more powerful than an atom bomb. It's a one-way living systemic electrical machine, a self-sustaining jet. You might say a flying saucer. I found a way to calculate this Taurus in a perfect 3D, 4D, and higher mathematical hologram that can be scaled up and down to infinity, and which we now call the Abha Taurus. Or sometimes we refer to it by Marco's name, which is the flux ruster, atom pulsar, electrical venturi, space-time implosion field generator coil. <laughs> and with it, it's possible to create a localized space-time implosion, a controlled desktop black hole. That magnet's still spinning. There's no energy in the coil. This is the final technology, the Philosopher's Stone, a reactionless drive unaffected by any weight that it carries. It's a true model of an atom, and with it I have the key to the periodic table, which a professor from the University of North Carolina told me could be the greatest scientific discovery of all time. We can, for the first time, cross from one science to another, unbroken, whether it's subatomic physics, periodic table, computer science, DNA. Remember, I said cure all diseases, artificial intelligence, all the result of etheron flux fields. And so simply put, this torus does it all. It's a blueprint for a perfectly efficient magnetic field generating coil, a spaceship, a surgical tool, a supercomputer, and even a high fidelity speaker all in one. Yeah, are such things done. possible? Frankly, yes, they are. And my team is ready to develop them at any time. What you see here was just from the most primitive approximation of my work. But the truth and the reality of our project is it suffered from a tremendous lack of attention. It has been peer reviewed by some of the best names in science. But because of our unwillingness to sell it out for private interests, it remains in the hands of exhausted volunteers like myself. Our goal is to create a grassroots energy and technology revolution by turning this information, this knowledge, over to the public in an open source project 
Science museum exhibits for kids, a simple book, a simple DVD, that's all we're looking to do. And by that, we want to turn it into the hands of the people to produce and save uh, the whole world. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>